Tomo News presents Firefighters. Firefighters try to host down a flying drone. On June 4, a man's unmanned camera drone that was filming a fire in Jacksonville, Florida was hosed down by firefighters. This footage shows the drone being sprayed with water and was eventually forced to land. John Thompson, the owner of the now-damaged drone, claimed that he was not violating privacy and that his drone was flying far enough not to interfere with the firefighters' efforts. The firefighters claim otherwise. Debates among netizens are intense, with no particular side taking the lead. Half agree with the firefighters' actions, while the other half defended John Thompson. The arguments present an interesting conundrum. A structure fire is hardly private, as news crews and bystanders were also taking footage. How is a distant flying drone any different from its ground-based counterparts? However, this growing trend of flying drones does concern a lot of people. Pretty soon, there may be hundreds of these unmanned crafts flying around filming everything. Potential breach of privacy may not be far off. The Federal Aviation Administration requires civilian users of drones to visit Know Before You Fly, an educational campaign for recreational users of drones. So who's on the wrong end here? John Thompson or the firefighters? Leave your thoughts below. Washington State firefighters use tiny oxygen masks to rescue a family of hamsters. Firefighters in Washington State responding to a fire at a mobile home had their life-saving skills tested when they found three asphyxiated baby hamsters trapped inside. A woman in Olympia, Washington had apparently left her dryer on when she left her mobile home last Friday afternoon. Upon returning, she was shocked to see her house on fire and firefighters battling the blaze. Her children were at school at the time, but their pets were visible inside the burning house. Help! Save us! Save us, please! After they put out the fire, the firefighters discovered a family of five hamsters trapped in their cage next to a cute marriage certificate drawn in crayon. The father and mother were awake, but their babies weren't moving. Firefighters then turned to their pet emergency pocket guide and used makeshift oxygen masks and a plastic bag equipped with oxygen tubes to try to resuscitate the hamsters. Two of the baby hamsters survived. Unfortunately, a third one died. The Lacey Fire District later tweeted these touching pictures of the rescue and cited the dryer as the preliminary cause of the fire. Philadelphia firefighters being investigated for having sex while on duty. Philadelphia firefighters are under, well, fire recently after a local news channel broke the story that they've been getting it on when they're supposed to be putting it out. Sexy times while on call when you're a firefighter is a big no-no. CBS3 News reported that as many as a dozen members of the Philadelphia Fire Department are being investigated by the Philadelphia Inspector General over allegations of engaging in sexual activity while on duty. Accusations against the firefighters include a woman engaging in sexual activity with two men inside a vehicle and engaging in sexual activity with male members at not one, but several firehouses around the city. All those involved remain anonymous for now, but once disciplinary decisions are made, the names and ranks of those involved will probably be embarrassingly revealed. Cops and firefighters' football charity match turns violent. Ever wanted to enjoy the spectacle of adult cops and firemen duking it out on a football field? No? Must just be marijuana man. Due to YouTube's guidelines on violent or graphic content, we can't show you the entire thing here, but it's available on our website via the link in the description. This past weekend, New York firefighters and cops held their annual charity match on Coney Island, with the latter winning 29 to 13. Proceeds from the game went to charities both emergency services support, but as you can see, they weren't exactly charitable with each other. The New York Daily News reports the fracas began when players confronted each other during the post-game handshake. One firefighter was seen bleeding after the fight broke out, while another was reportedly decked as well. Interestingly, there's no reports of anyone being disciplined for the scuffles. But what's your take? Is this the kind of sportsmanship you'd expect from New York's finest and New York's bravest during a charity match? Or should they try boxing or MMA instead of football next year? Joseph Brannon was just dying to become a firefighter. He wanted it so bad, in fact, that the 18-year-old set fire to Brooksville, Florida library just so that he can join firefighters in putting it out. Talk about burning ambition. On July 6th, a witness saw the wannabe firefighter running down the road, donning a firefighter's bunker gear as the East Hernando Branch Library billowed smoke. When asked about his attire, Brandon explained he was studying to become a fireman. 
Firefighters arriving at the scene noticed a suspicious looking young man who explained he had purchased a getup on eBay and that he wanted to help. He wasn't allowed to. Firefighters found burning wicker furniture piled up against the library's back porch door and were able to contain the fire. The miniature inferno, however, did trigger sprinklers inside the building, causing over a half million dollars in damages. Brannon eventually admitted to having started the fire himself. We don't quite understand his logic here, but who knows? Perhaps... Some men just want to watch the world burn. New York Fire Department to deploy drones to fight fires. New York's fire department will soon have new eyes and ears above the city. The NYFD is currently testing drones that will help firefighters get a better look at how to fight fires before sending in humans. The $85,000 drones painted fire engine red weigh roughly eight pounds and can move vertically and swivel 360 degrees. They will be attached to a 200 foot long tether they can capture both standard video and infrared images, which are then transmitted to a portable command center, so firefighters can see what they're up against. It takes two firefighters to operate each drone, a pilot to man the controls, and an observer to keep the area clear. The first drone will be deployed in the coming weeks, followed by two more before the end of the year. The drone idea was conceived after a deadly 2014 gas explosion in East Harlem when an amateur drone operator flew his drone in to help firefighters get pictures of the damaged site. Child saved from burning home, mother arrested and charged. Erica Rosello, 32, was arrested and charged after a Miami-Dade firefighter rescued her six-year-old daughter alone in a burning apartment on Thursday, February 18th. The fire started in the kitchen of their home in Miami just before 8 p.m. According to police, a witness said he saw Rosello in the hallway of the complex and smoke coming from her apartment. Rosello denied there was a fire but admitted her daughter was inside. The witness tried to enter the apartment but was unsuccessful. Police also said that neighbors told them Rosello was outside when the fire broke out and made no attempt to save her child, who could be heard screaming for help. Neighbors called 911. When rescue crews arrived, they smashed the bedroom window of the first floor home and carried the child to safety. According to investigators, while firefighters tended to the girl, Rosello fled the scene. The child was taken to a local hospital in stable condition and is expected to recover. Rosello later called her mother to check on her daughter. The woman convinced Rosello to come to the hospital. Police arrested Rosello when she arrived. She was charged Friday morning and is not allowed contact with the child. Miami-Dade firefighter David Arunsebia, the man who rescued the girl, is now being called a hero. The cause of the fire remains unclear. Michael Johnson's New York Fire Department company wants him fired for not getting fired up about fires. What's that expression? If you can't stand the heat, uh, don't be a firefighter? Let's start with a reality check. Most of us are not gung-ho about running into burning buildings. But stuff like that is kind of what firefighters do. Something rookie New York firefighter Michael Johnson may not completely understand. The fire department wants to fire him after a series of incidents some have termed cowardly. Johnson was allegedly photographed standing on a nearby curb as the rest of the team climbed up a ladder and into a three-alarm fire. The missing man prompted the fire chief to send people out to search for Johnson, which could have put lives at risk. Here's the part that's controversial. Critics say Johnson was hired so the department could fill minority quotas. Few would be dumb enough to say an Asian, an Arab, or African person would make a bad firefighter because of where they're from. But a bad firefighter is a bad firefighter. Prior to becoming a firefighter, Johnson was a twice-decorated New York EMT. Was he simply not cut out to be a firefighter? Did he really get into the fire department due to quotas? Have earnest but misguided quotas put the public at risk? Tell us what you think. At least nine Argentinian firefighters were killed trying to extinguish a fire at a warehouse yesterday. A large warehouse fire broke out in the Baracas neighborhood of Buenos Aires in Argentina on February the 5th. The warehouse is owned by US-based Iron Mountain, a documents and data management company. A group of firefighters who rushed to the scene to extinguish the blaze were trapped after a seven-meter tall wall collapsed onto them. At least nine responders were killed in the collapse and fire. At least a dozen other responders were hospitalized for their injuries, some which were considered serious. 
Texas firefighter responds to crash, finds his own family are the victims. This is every first responder's worst nightmare. When Thomas Lake volunteer firefighter Aaron Van Ripe on Saturday responded to a call of a head-on collision involving a Buick, which crossed the center lane and struck a pickup truck. He had no idea he would be trying to save the life of his own wife and seven-year-old son. The crash scene was horrific. Aaron feared the worst for his wife, Amber, who was thrown from the car. Rescuers freed his son, Jonathan, who was trapped inside. Both mother and son were rushed by helicopter to a nearby hospital. Amber spent nine hours in surgery and is currently in critical condition. Amber fractured her hip in five different places, while Jonathan suffered a broken arm and leg. The family has a long road of recovery ahead, and a GoFundMe page established to help with expenses and medical bills has reached nearly $50,000 in just two days. Firefighters use olive oil to free man with his head stuck in rocks. A Rhode Island man got his head stuck in rocks on Saturday while trying to reach for his dropped cell phone. The poor dude got trapped all the way up to his chest after he bent down to reach the phone on a rocky jetty in Narragansett. We can only imagine what that 911 call must have been like. <laughs> Firefighters tried for over two and a half hours to pull the guy out, but to no avail. Then they got a bright idea. They greased the man in olive oil and were then able to free him. He's in the hospital, but is said to be okay. A local fire captain told WJAR NBC 10 that they've had similar cases to this in the past involving animals, but never a human. Well, guess there's a first time for everything. A volunteer of the fire department in Japan was prosecuted last Friday for setting off fireworks in front of two fire engines on December 26th. After painting the town red on Boxing Day, the accused man got blind drunk and went on patrol with other volunteers in two fire engines in Miyoshi Aichi. While waiting for a traffic light, the volunteer threw a firework out the back seat window, causing big explosions. A woman who was driving in front of the fire engines got out of her car and told the volunteers to stop, who fled the scene in the fire engines. She later wrote down the number plate of the vehicles and reported to police. During questioning, the volunteer claimed that he did not consume any alcohol and the firework was just a prank for his colleagues. What do you think of his firework trick? A firefighter in San Francisco has resigned after he crashed a fire truck he was driving into a motorcyclist while drunk. On the night of June 29th, Michael Quinn was responding to what turned out to be a false alarm when he entered the intersection at 5th and Howard Streets on a red light. Quinn slammed into motorcyclist Jack Frazier and sent him flying towards a fire hydrant, breaking his ribs and puncturing a lung. Quinn then left the scene of the accident and went across the street to a bar where he was caught on surveillance video chugging pitchers of water with another firefighter present. When he finally returned back to the fire station hours later, he still blew a 0.13 blood alcohol level. Frazier is still recovering, while five other members of the department face discipline over the incident. 19 firefighters were killed fighting a wildfire in Arizona on Sunday, in one of the U.S.'s worst firefighting tragedies in decades. Reports said several of the dead were found inside their temporary fire shelters. Temporary fire shelters are used as a last resort when firefighters become trapped. Firefighters should ideally clear the ground to the soil before deploying the shelter and climbing inside. The shelter consists of two layers, an outer layer of aluminum foil laminated to woven silica and an inner layer of aluminum laminated to fiberglass. An air gap offers further insulation. The outer layers reflect around 95% of radiant heat, but convective heat is absorbed rapidly. Temperatures of 500 degrees Fahrenheit and above can break down the glue that bonds the fabric to the foil. The foil can then be torn, making it less able to reflect radiant heat. The Yarnell Hills fire is one of dozens that have hit the western U.S. in recent weeks. Experts say the current fire season could turn out to be one of the worst on record. 